Hi everyone. Today we'll be going through the first part of the Rheumatological Disorders series. We'll be covering rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, antiphospholipid syndrome, dermatomyositis and polymyositis, and Sjogren's syndrome. So uh, for rheumatoid arthritis, um, symptoms-wise, we can think of it in terms of three big groups. Um, firstly, that of joint pains. Secondly, that of systemic symptoms. And thirdly, that of extra-articular manifestations. Um, so joint pains are generally inflammatory in nature, um, affecting the small joints, uh, and they are symmetrical. Um, this is characterized by uh, swelling and warmth as associated with early morning stiffness. And generally, there is an element of chronicity defined by greater than six weeks. In terms of the extra-articular manifestations, uh, there are multiple uh, associations. And this is important uh, because uh, the Station 5 uh, scenarios oftentimes uh, test for associations. Um, so for example, uh, it could be a patient coming in with uh, breathlessness who has uh, bronchiectasis or ILD. It could be a patient coming in with uh, lower limb swelling secondary to nephrotic syndrome that is caused by amyloidosis associated with rheumatoid arthritis, or a patient who comes in with numbness of the fingers um, with, a, uh, with a nerve palsy that is due to mononeuritis multiplex. So it's important to be aware of the different extra-articular manifestations and be able to think laterally. Um, shortness of breath and rheumatoid arthritis is a common scenario that can occur in both Station 2 as well as Station 5. Um, there are several big groups to think about. Firstly, that of respiratory disease. Um, so rheumatoid arthritis itself is associated with both interstitial lung disease and bronchiectasis. And treatment uh, in rheumatoid arthritis with methotrexate uh, and even leflunomide uh, can induce interstitial lung disease. Um, patients with uh, RA can get uh, cardiomyopathies from amyloidosis and that can cause fluid overload and an extreme nephrotic syndrome where there is uh, severe hypoalbuminemia and uh, pleural effusions, they can get breathless too. Um, patients with rheumatoid arthritis, are, especially when they're on treatment, are immunosuppressed and hence are at risk for uh, infections or community acquired pneumonias, uh, tu tuberculosis and even opportunistic infections. Uh, like pneumocystis uh, carinae. So the examination-wise um, is, uh, apart from being focused on the joint, it's also important to look at the other associated areas. So in terms of the, the joints and typically the hands itself, um, typically you'd see a symmetrical deforming polyarthropathy. It's important to comment whether or not the disease is active or quiescent. Uh, there are several characteristic features such as the swan neck, butonia, set thumb uh, deformities. Uh, that you can uh, look for images. Um, and uh, it's also important then uh, after inspecting to uh, feel the joints uh, for warmth or active disease and subsequently test movement and function. Um, of note, it's important to inspect for the evidence of any surgical scars. And if there are any scars, it's important to then differentiate whether or not um, there is an arthrodesis or arthroplasty uh, procedure. For rheumatoid arthritis, apart from affecting the hands, they can affect the toes too. So um, it is good practice to offer to examine the feet of the patient uh, as well. Um, so patients with RA can have rheumatoid nodules. Uh, and um, in the hands, apart from the joints, it's important to look for evidence of telangiectasia, Raynaud's, intrinsic muscle wasting, and then to look for other extra-articular manifestations in the eyes, the lungs, and the abdomen. Uh, investigations wise uh, would include that of uh, basic labs such as the full blood count, looking for any cytopenias or evidence of infection, inflammatory markers. Um, the two antibodies of note would be rheumatoid factor and anticyclic citrullinated peptides. Um, one may consider other uh, serologies if, let's say, uh, one is considering uh, other rheumatological differentials. Imaging is helpful. Uh, to uh, characterize the, the joint uh, disease. And um, oftentimes prior to treatment, uh, one would get some baseline labs uh, in the form of renal panel, liver function, hep B, hep C, and latent TB screening. Uh, management wise uh, would include management of acute flares with uh, NSAIDs and steroids. Uh, in terms of DMATS wise, it would include steroid, steroid sparing immunomodulators, as well as biologics as listed. Uh, it's also important to look out for uh, bone health 
and to vaccinate patients, uh, especially given that they are on immunosuppression. The next condition we're talking about is systemic lupus erythematosus. And um, as we know that SLD is a great mimicker um, of um, many con uh, conditions and can present in many ways in protein fashions as well. Um, they can present with a rash and it can be approached to hair loss. They can have neurological symptoms, nephrotic nephritic syndrome, or even recurrent clotting problems. I think about it in terms of um, two a uh, big group of connective tissue problems and three uh, systemic uh, diseases and or rather three systems being affected. And, uh, and then there's the antiphospholipid syndrome group and others. So the two connective tissue groups would be mucocutaneous and arthritis. So mucocutaneous, we think of it in terms of fresh ulcers, hair loss, and arthritis is usually non-deforming. Uh, there can be serositis as well. Sorry, I forgot that. Um, in terms of the systems, it would be the brain, the kidneys, and the hematological system. Neurology, neurological manifestations uh, can be seizures, encephalitis, myelitis. Um, and uh, once again, for renal involvement, it can be either nephrotic or nephritic picture. Uh, for hematological uh, problems, they can get bruising disorders. Uh, and they can also get clotting problems when there's associated antiphospholipid syndrome. Hence, when there's suspicion of SLE, it would be important to ask for an obstetric history uh, for recurrent pregnancy losses, as well as to um, ask for any features uh, that may suggest previous clotting problems. Uh, of note, it would be worthwhile inspecting for the presence of levido reticularis. Uh, SLE can affect other systems such as the GI system, MSK system, uh, and others as listed here. So investigation-wise, uh, they can be linked to the systems that are affected. So full blood count, as mentioned, based on hematological involvement, renal tests, such as renal panel, uh, form microscopy, urinary uh, protein creatinine ratio, uh, peripheral blood film looking for hemolysis. Um, the antibodies are important because they are sort of part of the diagnostic criteria. So anti-nuclear antibody, anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-Smith direct Coombs test, as well as the anti phosphor lipid antibodies, which include lupus, anticoagulant, anticardiolipin, anti-beta-2 glycoprotein, and complements uh, may be low. Um, subsequently, um, one can pursue uh, other organ-specific targeted investigations as listed. Uh, Management-wise, uh, non-pharmacological measures are important, so sunlight protection, smoking cessation is key. Hydroxychloroquine is the backbone for treatment, and subsequently would be steroids, steroids bearing immunomodulators, and um, biologics. And oftentimes, the immunomodulators are chosen dependent on the nature of organ involvement. Um, of note also, there's a group of drug-induced lupus, and these are caused by agents such as hydralazine, brocanamide, or isoniazid. Next, we talk about antiphospholipid syndrome. It's important to recognize that there's both a clinical and a um, laboratory component to diagnosing antiphospholipid syndrome. So patients with antiphospholipid syndrome can present with any form of vascular uh, thrombosis, um, as well as uh, pregnancy morbidity. So hence, uh, once again, it's important to ask for pregnancy losses. Um, of note for the laboratory investigations wise, uh, there must be antibody positivity at least uh, three months apart for it to be considered significant. Uh, antiphospholipid syndrome can be associated with lupus, as mentioned, or it can be primary. And treatment is generally with warfarin rather than DOEX um, and uh, use of low molecular weight heparin in pregnancy. Next, we talk about dermatomyositis and polymyositis. Um, these patients may present with a rash, they may present with weakness, dysphagia, or breathlessness. Um, these are some of the key features which we'll uh, talk about in the next slide. Um, and there can also be uh, extra um, um, or manifestations in other systems, such as interstitial lung disease, cardiomyopathy, there can be dysphagia. And of note that is important is that they are associated with malignancies. So when one is taking a history, it's important to um, ask for uh, malignancy-related symptoms and constitutional symptoms. And in the management, age-appropriate cancer screening should be offered. Um, in terms of investigations, uh, first line would be that of uh, uh, muscle enzymes such as uh, creatine kinase, aldolase, uh, electromyogram, uh, and subsequently MRI muscle and muscle biopsy would be the gold standard. 
there are antibodies uh, that may be used for prognostication. So antisynthetase antibodies such as anti uh, may be associated with ILD, Raynaud's arthritis mechanics, hence. And as mentioned, age-appropriate cancer screening is key. Treatment-wise, generally involves that of steroid and steroid sparing agents. Um, so this slide shows, uh, taken from the internet, shows um, this is uh, um, Gautron's papules. Uh, these are neophyll talent jactaceous. These are mechanics hands. This is Gautron's sign. This uh, is a helotrope rash, and this is Shaw's sign. Next, we talk about Sjogren's. Um, so typically, Sjogren's uh, presents with uh, dry eyes, dry mouth, uh, otherwise known as xerostomia. Um, it could be a patient instead who suffers with complications of the dry mouth. So they could present with dental caries. They could have a problem swallowing that is not really a true dysphagia per se, but because it's very dry, they find it difficult to, to swallow. So in a patient who has, who has problems swallowing, it's worthwhile also asking whether or not um, there's any dryness of the mouth that they notice. And sometimes then they can manifest with uh, polydipsia because they feel very dry with resulting polyuria as well. Um, patients may also have uh, other, system, uh, other uh, uh, symptoms such as uh, arthralgia, fibromyalgia. Uh, they can get vasculitic problems. Uh, they can get ILD uh, of note. Uh, they can get mononeuritis multiplex. Um, hematological problems such as cytopenias and renal tubular acidosis, which is not an uncommon uh, manifestation. So in patients, uh, if let's say this is a station five case with laboratory investigations suggestive of uh, RTA, it would be important to ask for a history uh, of a secondary cause such as Sjogren's. Uh, clinical features will include that of a potentially parotid enlargement, absence of salivary pulling in the mouth, dental caries, and the lungs are looking out for ILD. Um, Investigations-wise, so antibodies will include that of anti rho and anti la Functional studies are looking for eye, dry, uh, dry eyes and salivary hypofunction will include that of Schirmer's test uh, and a salivary scintigraphy or sal salometry. Imaging uh, of the respective glands and biopsy can be considered as well. Treatment-wise, smoking cessation once again is key. And for more disease, uh, treatment with secretor gox and moisturizing eye drops can be considered. And in severe disease, uh, immunomodulating agents are once again used. So we've come to the end of this presentation.